What up, folks? You made it. It's your favorite comic on the come up. Back for season three of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. If you've been searching for a pod that talks all things comedy from the perspective of a rising comic, as well as kicking with some of the dopest comedians in the business, then this is the podcast for you. What up? What up, good people? What's going on? How y'all feeling? How's everybody doing? Everybody all right? I'm sure they are. It's your main man, Melly Mel, back at you, Melvin Williams, for another episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast, Season 3, Episode 10. Season 3, Episode 10. Season 3 is coming to an end. We all know I do 11 episodes a season. One more episode, and we're going to be popping off into Season 4, man. For all my loyal listeners, I appreciate you so much. Thank y'all so much for, for coming on and, uh, you know, picking up the content. And checking everything out, y'all know how I feel about y'all. For the new listeners, man, hey, man, I appreciate y'all as well. Indeed. Special guest this go-round, my man Joel Byers. It's actually a special episode for me because this guy has his own comedy podcast and platform as well. Very, very big platform, man. He's a talented comedian in his own right. Uh, out of ATL, yep. But, uh, yeah, he's been doing his uh, thing for a while, man. And he's got this uh, hell of a platform with this podcast called the hot breath podcast and he basically does the same thing that i do and so whenever i see him uh post stuff and i'm saying oh man he's interviewing some folks as well i've always told myself you know what it'll be a good it'll be a good idea to interview him uh one go around and so i finally got him man mr joel byers we're gonna get into a whole lot of stuff all things about a uh, podcast all things about how he started he's gonna tell me a little bit about his platform and why he decided to start doing it and then me and him just kind of bonded and vibed over, you know, uh, what what it's like to make a podcast and things of that nature. But yeah, you guys are going to enjoy him, Mr. Joel Byers. You already know how I do. Shout out. Shout out. My shout out. So that's how I start every episode. I start with the one and only Mr. Roger Feeney. Uh, he's the guy that uh, believed in my vision when I told him, I said, I want to do a podcast, man. He was like, oh, okay. He's the manager over at the, uh, my home club, the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. He heard everything I said, and it was like, hey, man, use the green room. So I pretty much, uh, whenever someone comes to the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase that I feel like interviewing, he chats with them. I chat with them. And uh, during the uh, during some time, let me take some time during the break, and I go and interview them. So, man, I haven't actually been, uh, I featured a few uh, about a month ago. Uh, there, but I haven't uh, actually done an interview in the green. I got to get back over there, man, and uh, yeah, see who's uh, on the slate. When I get a chance to see who's performing there, I get back over there. But thank you so much, man, Roger Finney. Thank you so much for allowing me to, you know, start this podcast right there in that comedy club. And new shout out this go around, man. Uh, Zandy's Comedy Club. Zandy's man, they got this comedy club in Rosemont. Everybody knows. Uh, who listens here and knows that I perform there. Uh, on, on, I try to do it as regular as possible. I think I've done uh, close to 10, um, 10 performances there. They got these uh, showcases where they bring you know comedians in. And most of the times they're just local there in Chicago. But you know, knowing me, you know how I get down. I can, you know, I can fly wherever I feel like flying. So I goes over there, man, for the minutes, man. And uh, it is, uh, without a doubt, one of the best comedy clubs I've ever performed. And I love it. The Green Room, sick. The room where you perform sick, the stage sick, and last my last performance there, man. Oh my God! You talking about a Wednesday night being packed, man? Everybody was there. It was it was, it was it's sick. So uh, they love me over there. I love them, man. That's why I said I'm gonna start shouting them out. I, I got I got my home club in Ann Arbor, so that's definitely not gonna change. But Zanies Rosemont has quickly became one of my favorite comedy clubs in the country out of all the ones that I've done. So, hey, shout out to the folks over there at Zadie's Comedy Club. Keep doing what it is that you are doing. Back in the day, sponsor this go around. Hey, I got a doozy for y'all this time. If any of you sons of bitches can't remember Etch a Sketch, you know that red box that with the gray where you, where you, dog, <laughs> where you, it was like a red little box with the little two knobs on it, and you turn it, it'd be a gray, it'd be a gray middle. It didn't it look like a TV, but it wasn't. A, you know, you, you know what a damn etch a sketch was. It was that was that was some back in the day shit right there, man. Like I told you, this is back in the day sponsor, man. Hey, etch a sketch, 
Hey, if you if, if your ass knew how to draw some shit on an etch and sketch, bruh, hey, dog. Any 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 motherfucker knew how to draw something on an etch and sketch, you better be a you you was a genius. Now I don't give a damn what you got. I don't give a damn what was wrong. You was a, you a genius if you could draw some shit on etch and sketch. I couldn't make shit on no etch and sketch. I just be drawing like a, like tall buildings. That's all I could do. Just shit in straight lines. Try to make a house. <laughs> I, I used to try to make all kinds of you know, etch sketches. I, hey, this motherfucker that could draw people on an etch sketch. That's a hey. That's a that's a damn genius right there. Shit. So, hey, etch sketch. I don't really see them around no more, man. That's some old school shit. But if any some bitch know how to draw on an etch sketch, man, hey, 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 hit me up. Hit me up. And let me know what you can make on a damn etch sketch. Cause we might have to do some bit. We might have to do some business shit. Like you, if you could draw the etch sketch, bro, that's 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 damn near impossible. But yes, my back in the day sponsor does go around. I don't see them around anymore, but damn it. Somebody reminded me of etch sketch and I said, you know what, that's gonna be my back in the day sponsor this go around. Etch a sketch. To the new listeners, man, y'all already know how I feel about all of this, man. I don't get any money. I don't hey I, everybody, oh Mel, you make money off your pockets? Hell no. Not at all. I just been putting Three year, three up of three seasons of content out there, cause I, the way I feel is content is king. You know what I'm saying? Just like they say, cash is king. Don't use credit. Hey, damn it, that's why content is king. Put out as much shit as you can put out right now. Just get it out there. You know what I'm saying? Try to make it as quality as you can. Of course, don't put out no bullshit. But hey, get your quality on. But hey, you don't have to have no whole lot of money or none of that. Content is king. Throw th- throw it out there. Give it your best. And then guess what's gonna happen? Somebody go one of your shits is gonna pop, right? And then everybody gonna be like, oh wow, this is amazing. This dude, man, yeah, he just did this overnight. No. What they're gonna do is you're gonna say, no, I got years of shit you need to go back and look. Go to my YouTube, go to my website, go to this, that, and other. You're gonna see that Melvin Williams been getting it in for a while. You know what I mean? So ain't nothing gonna be no overnight success type shit for me. I've been doing stand-up over 10 years at this point. I've been putting all type of shit out. I've been writing screenplays, scripts, everything. Uh, anybody that don't know me, like I said, new listeners, check out my website, man. Meldon's Comedy. Meldon'sComedy.com. That's my website. You can go in there and look at all types of videos that I've done, stand up. You can look at my new, all my new uh, endeavors that I got uh, popping, uh, including my new album that I'm about to come out with, comedy album. Yes, taking it back to the old school. You know how motherfuckers used to do old comedy albums? Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby. I'm doing that. I'm coming out with a comedy album, Straight Heat Stand Up, entitled I'm Old But I'm New. You know what I'm saying? That's a you know fix, fixture on myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm old because everybody know me. Like I said, I ain't no young, I ain't no spring chicken no more. So I'm old. My body is weary. My bones hurt. But I'm new because don't nobody know who the hell I am. So yeah, y'all make sure y'all pick that up. It's coming soon. I'm going to sell it directly off of my website. So Meldon's Comedy. Dot com is my website. Season four of the Comedy Channel podcast is coming soon with amazing guests like Cedric the Entertainer, Leonard Oots, Mike Epps, Gary Owen. Yes, I know y'all tripping. Like he gonna get all of them? Yes. Just so y'all know, y'all y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all fucking with a heavyweight. Y'all ain't messing with no regular dude. Like I I do this. You know what I'm saying? So hey, if I say I'm gonna get them, damn it, I'm gonna get them. Comedy Channel podcast season four is coming soon. Y'all make sure y'all check me out. Oh man, yes indeed, man. New rule for me too. I don't allow people at my house no more. No, no you can't come over my crib no more. I'm sorry. Yeah, because he's trying to use the bathroom. I don't play that shit. <laughs> like seriously, people's bathroom etiquette at your house is terrible, isn't it? I don't like that, man. Yeah, I'm serious. I had to make a new rule every day. Your, your bathroom etiquette has to be you, on point. You know what I'm saying? I had a guy come fix my washer and dryer one day, so you know he fixed it. That's all he was there to do. Stranger, right? That's all he was there to do. So he gets done, he's like, hey man, can I use your bathroom before I leave? I'm like, sure, go ahead. This motherfucker dropped a stinky load in my bathroom. Oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. Now hey, guess what? You gotta be family if you're gonna drop a stinky load, I'm sorry. You, you can't just come over to my house and do the number two. That's not, oh no, oh no. Hey, and this wasn't no regular number two, though. Like, he was in there 15 minutes. I was like, is this, is this fool crazy? 
So he comes out, you know what I'm saying? All right, man, thanks a lot. And man, I went in the bathroom, and I swear to God, the wallpaper and shit was off the wall. Like, he, this son of a bitch tore my bathroom up. You understand me? Hey, the clock wasn't even running no more. The hands had broken off the clock. The battery popped the fuck battery on the floor. I'm like, shit. The shower curtains look hinged. They look like they had been burned at the bottom. I'm like, Yeah. Oh my God. And I had a little painting up. You know the painting where the dogs are playing poker? I had that in my bathroom. I looked up there, those motherfuckers was like. Let's go ahead and keep this straight comedy, man. Y'all already know how we do. We're about to dive into season three, episode 10, Comedy Chatter Podcast with Mr. Joel Byers. Let's get it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. I got my man, I've been trying to get with him for a while. Just so you guys know, like I said, hey, I've been Facebook, Instagram stalking him for a while, but I finally got him here, the creator and the uh, producer of Hot Breath Podcast, Mr. Joel Byers. How you doing, sir? Oh, thank you so much for having me, Melvin. I'm an honor to be on your show, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now... Like I told you, man, we just kind of kick it at the comedy chatter, you know, so I just kind of ask you some questions, things that you got going on. First thing I want to know is about the Hot Breath podcast. Yes, sir. I want to know kind of where that kind of, how that inspired you and uh, did you uh, do that in, in terms of get, you know, other with other comedians or just tell me a little bit about how Hot Breath inspired you. Yeah, Hot Breath started about six years ago Okay. Uh, as a way to highlight Atlanta comedians. Okay, so just straight Atlanta. It, folks. it was straight yeah. Atlanta. It started with comics that were on Last Comic Standing that year. Okay. We, we had like ten that were in the finals, so I like just interviewed all of them as like a way to kind of be a time capsule for the Atlanta comedy scene, and then from there it just grew into now over three hundred interviews with comedians. Awesome, awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. That was exactly the information I needed. I did not know that it started in Atlanta. I, you know, I, I moved to Atlanta in '03, and I've been here for a while. But uh, yeah, the whole comedy scene thing was just kind of something that I was had, had to pick up. You know, mm-hmm. once I got here, I'm more Michigan. But uh, yeah, so I didn't know that you started it for straight just Atlanta people because yeah, you're doing it big now, so it's, <laughs> it's all over the place. Yeah, 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 definitely. So tell me a little bit about your, uh, you know, your stand-up comedy. I know you're a comic as well. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing comedy 11 years now. Um, I came up in Atlanta doing everything from like hipster bars to strip clubs to sidewalks to public buses. Like, I just came up in the mud, just wanting to get as good as possible. And now I've released my own comedy special. I've produced my own tours. I, it, where we're doing an interview right now, I have performed at a birthday party in like the ballroom right down the hall here. Awesome, like, I'm awesome. Anywhere, man. It's <laughs> all about learning comedy and getting as good as possible. Awesome. That's funny. Yeah, it's funny he mentioned that. I tell him, I said, whenever I do a, a, a show or an episode, and I need to kind of meet with a comedian. I always tell him, I say, hey, man, where, where's the nearest hotel? Yep. We, 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 we can go right to that lobby and we can make it happen. I so, do the same thing. Exactly. Same thing. Yep, exactly. So you already told me, like, when you started. Are you a hip to a uh, laughing skull? Have you uh, pre- performed there? Yeah, yeah, I'm hip to all the clubs here. You know, um, it's been great to see the Atlanta comedy scene grow and just boom into, like, really, I mean, a comedy, like, destination at this point with so many clubs we have. So, yeah, I've seen... I've seen all the clubs and just all the shows been building and growing. And Laughing School's a great club. There's a lot of great clubs here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I dig it. I've uh, been, uh, I've been actually a few times. It's a, uh, it was tough to kind of like try to get into once you, but once you get into, like then they'll start knowing you and saying, hey, mm-hmm. you know, we'll bring you on. Now, uh, what do you do in terms of uh, like, do you do? Like, I know you said you do all of them, but uh, do you do some of the urban clubs as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant by, like, strip clubs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, dude, I... Got you. I started started in urban rooms. Uh, Like, white people wouldn't mess with me, and they they still really really don't all the way 100. I don't know if I'm too white for them or what, but, like, I I started up in the urban rooms. Like, those are the only shows that would put me up, and what I like about them, too, is that the urban rooms have always been based on, like, respect, and, like, if you kill, you'll get on, and if you kill, you'll get more time. Like... All like the other like 
quote hip cool rooms or whatever it's all like political it's like oh but how big is your mustache are you ironic enough to be here it's just like all <laughs> whack it's not based on just skill and i know it's the urban rooms it's like if you show up and you do well they're gonna put you up more and more and you're gonna start getting booked more and more so that's that's been since I started coming up in those rooms and they've really prepared me to, I was at a retirement community performing last night in front of old white people. Yes, you were telling me about that. <laughs> yeah. You were telling me about that. I was like, I actually asked too. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it all starts with, and I was just on Instagram Live talking about this with a comic in Knoxville actually named Deontay. And he was asking me like, if a, if a joke works in front of one audience and not, a, not another, it's like what, and he was talking about like different races and backgrounds. And I was mm -hmm. like, my whole goal has been to perform anywhere I can and make sure my material translate to as many different people as possible. And that requires a lot of stage time and repetition and reviewing your sets and refining your sets. But that's, my goal has been to entertain everyone from grandkids to grandparents, black, white, blue, whatever. I just wanna bring as much comedy to as many people as possible. And it all started in those urban rooms of Atlanta. Urban rooms, <laughs> AKA, AKA strip club, bro. Strip, the candy shop, RIP. Yes, you know, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Milkshake Mondays. <laughs> I got you, I got you. Now who's some of the, uh, some of your more memorable interviews on Hot Breath thus far? Oh man, um, well I mean, we've shared a lot of the same guests, you know, Ali Sadiq and Roy Wood Jr. Yeah. There's so many, yeah, uh, yeah. Rodney Perry. And um, Ali was actually a memorable one just because he gets heated. Man, it's hilarious you mentioned that. <laughs> it's hilarious you went to, to Ali. Now, now I, I, like, I was going to ask you about it, but I actually had a chance. So you, don't, you, have a, you have a video, too. See, mine's just yeah, audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I pulled it up on YouTube and got a chance to see it. Yeah. And, man, <laughs> I was like, man, is this guy like Ali trying to give Joel a hard time? or what's going on so keep in mind you never know like the beginning like you never know like with me and you just sat down you never know the beginning right so i had no idea what was going on but he can be cantankerous at sometimes <laughs> and you just never know like you know with his background i was like he could snap at any moment and just kill me with a fingernail <laughs> like but he's so cool and he yeah. he's done the show twice now and okay. it's, it's, i'm so, so honored that he was willing to do it twice even once really mm -hmm. but like he's just one of those just og comics who just stayed hitting it staying grinding and then it's paid off for him yeah, exactly and it, exactly it's, he's so it's i love just and it's it's such a privilege to get to interview comics like we have you know because you get to learn from these people firsthand that normally you would never get to like sit down with you i mean you had deal hugley you know i mean yeah, i had yeah. i had said I had Cedric the Entertainer on my show, but it was like for like 15 minutes. But with DL, you were in there for a minute and you guys were chopping it up. So I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I saw that you had Cedric the Entertainer. That's somebody that I'm actually hoping to get eventually as well because he's one of my favorite, yeah. you know, one of my favorite guys. Oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, DL was real, real cool. Ali Sadiq actually hooked that one up for me, you know, because he and I have become, you know, friends since then. That's so he hooked that one up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, called him over at. Uh, Norcross. Yeah, Atlanta, Atlanta Comedy Atlanta Theater. Comedy theater. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Atlanta Comedy Theater. That's another great club. Oh my. They, yeah. <laughs> this year, man, oh my God. <laughs> this year, they have, well, the, the, that last year going into this year, they have went in. There was Chappelle, Chappelle was there. Louis C.K. was there. I was like, oh my. Like, yeah, they are not joking around. Ray Davis, what, Mike Epps is going to be there soon. Like, and it's Atlanta, Atlanta, right here in Atlanta, you know. Yeah. So it, it's so cool yeah. just to see people coming to Atlanta for comedy and just this high caliber comics you know, coming and performing. It's amazing to be a part of it. Yes, 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 definitely. Now, I always ask all of my guests who you're fanning on right now. Like, who who, who makes Joel laugh? Is there anybody? They could be, like, some new newbies that we have no idea that you saw. Like, oh, man, this was funny. Or it could be, like, you know, some kings of comedy, some guys that are out there that we all know. But who makes uh, Joel laugh? Man, I've really, I've been, have you seen the new Bo Burnham comedy special yet? I have. Are you familiar with Bo Burnham? I do know. You him. do know Bo Burnham? His new special is incredible. It's more like music and a stand up. It's like this whole thing. He shot during the pandemic where it was just oh. him with cameras and he shot it, produced it, edited it all himself. So oh. it's pretty gnarly. But okay. um, if I'm thinking about like younger up and coming comics, man, there, there's this cat here in Atlanta named Daniel Delano. Oh. who's really um he he's on the grind in several ways one just like performing a lot but he's also been recording it and posting his clips online and doing like the andrew schultz method where you just put your clips out there of crowd work 
put subtitles on them, and then just post them everywhere. He's doing that, and it's working for him, you Ooh, know? So, okay. so yeah, I, I love seeing comics on the grind creating their own success, really mm -hmm. taking their careers into their own hands, you know? Um, that's been my approach since the beginning of just that DIY self-made hustle yeah. of being a comic and not waiting for an opportunity but creating it. Yeah. And that can be a longer road, but I think it'll take you farther. Exactly. And a segue into that, I also ask comedians about the whole, you know, the way people aren't waiting nowadays. You got the internet. You got the, you know, people are buying their own camera and they're going out and they're doing it on their own. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about that? It's everything. I mean, at this point, a comedian... We're, I mean, first, a comedian is like, we're a Swiss Army knife anyway. You know, we write, we perform, we edit, we're the director. We're, we're everything at this point. And being, this is something I've learned from interviewing so many comics also, is like, being one thing isn't enough anymore. Like, yeah. being just the stand-up, what else do you do? Do you have a podcast? Uh, do you write sketches? Like, what, what else do you have going on? You true, know, true. We're, we're our own talent, we're our own managers, our own agents. And the more we can leverage technology to create a platform to give us exposure that we need to really build a fan base that then sells out shows, the better off we are. But that being said, I can tell you as 11 years into the comedy game that I need to do better at that. I need to be more consistent. There's so many more things I need to do personally that like we know we should do, but it's like, geez, to add that to the to-do list. Of you course, know? of course, <laughs> I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah. But it's all part of the grind. It's a full-time job. And I, that is a big part that you're seeing comics pop off without really even getting on stage, you know? And yeah. you can't really hate it. It's 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 the game now. Yeah, no uh, Johnny Carson no more, no Conan, no, none of that yeah. stuff. I remember you used to have to get one of those in order to blow. Yeah. And now, hey, people will literally get on their phone yeah. and do some little skits and sketches. And before you know it, they're selling out comedy clubs. And that that's a skill in itself, too. You know, they can, uh, a lot of social media comics can get, like, like a bad rap or whatever from the OGs. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've heard OGs now like come around to it as well. So that thing that may be a little older mindset because now even OGs are seeing, oh, these kids are popping off and selling out. I need to be doing the same. And some of them, some of them are actually pretty good. But like yeah. you said, like you said, like it take the only things that the OGs sometimes <laughs> usually say is that they haven't, you know, uh, mastered the craft yet. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They'll be doing comedy a year and a half, and now they're selling out a show just because they got all those. So that's what they really are popping. But some of them, man, like I said, they're actually putting their putting their foot into the craft and getting good, and some of them are getting really good on stage. Yeah, you know? I mean, I've, I've written for a few social media comics. Oh, okay. About, like, we've done, like, uh, writing sessions together and stuff because mm -hmm. they are taking it seriously. Yeah. And they do understand, oh, there's a lot of fundamentals I need to learn exactly. to help build an act on. So, yeah, I've, I've helped out a few social media comics with that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool beans now. All right. So, uh, getting back to your podcast, High Breath, I know you said that you uh, have, have interviewed some uh, people, you know, like live, and you, it's, all, uh, it's a video and audio. Mm -hmm. But uh, recently, since the pandemic, you've had to go Zoom. Tell me the experience with that. Do you think has that been better off, or do you like it better uh, when you're when you're in front of them? Oh man, well definitely better in front. There's not there's no just way to replicate being in front of someone and having that connection. And I, I was not I was non Zoom my like the entire podcast career. Like we've been doing it oh. six years. I had some comics who were like, yeah, I'll do it on Zoom, and I was like, I'd rather wait till in person. So I actually turned down some interviews before because it was gonna be via Zoom. And then when pandemic hit, I was like, all right, forget it, I'll just do it all via Zoom. You gotta do it, yeah, and it, yeah. It's still, it gets the point across, you get to meet the people, you get to do an interview, all that virtually. So I mean, it's not a waste of time, but definitely in person is the way to go. Yeah, yeah, that's the way I felt. Like I said, I've, I've had people, you know, oh, I, I could do it. I could do it uh, over the phone. Like, why are you? They, they, I'm always just hell bent too. I'm just like, oh yeah, nah. Me too. I gotta do. And they're like, no, we can do it over the phone. What's wrong with that? I'm like, ah, oh, well, the fact that I'm all audio as well. Mm -hmm. Like the, the the interviews are going so going to go so much better. Like I, I hate when I see those uh, interviews and it's like so. Uh, even like you see this on the news, like when they're in the news, and you're like, so what's going on? And all of a sudden, the person's just standing there. <laughs> but all of a sudden they hear it later than they <laughs> oh that's right yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. so it like takes a while to travel through those channels before that's why I say you know it's so much better just to do it in person it so, really is yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. some people are more accessible you know I was able to interview like Jeff Foxworthy oh. over the pandemic because we were able to do it via Zoom like so that's there, huge there's that's a convenience a factor to it mm -hmm. that I didn't consider before 
that um, it may help get higher profile guests, you know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's the in person. That that's where it's at, really. That's exactly, yeah. definitely, definitely, definitely. So yeah, that was the. I definitely wanted to ask you that. So uh, do me a favor and just kind of tell everybody all your uh, social media, monics, you know, all yeah, your yeah, monikers yeah, and stuff, yeah. and uh, tell them what what you got going on next, things like that. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> my ADD kicked in on that. Yeah. What, what yes. was the question? That's what, oh, I, was, that's what I was going to do. Yep. Okay. All I was asking you to do, but I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that happened because that's what I wanted to do, actually. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask you about some of the uh, some of the comedians that you've uh, talked to, because I remember you posted this one time on Instagram. Some of the comedians that have reached out to you and to- gave, gave you like a big ups because you've actually helped them with their career with the hot breath. I wanted you to talk some, some about that. Like, man, like, thank you so much. Like, you're doing this, and this is inspiring me to, like, kind of start my stand-up comedy. Dude, I get messages daily from comics in, you know, America, Alabama, Oregon, <laughs> but I mean, to India and to Australia yeah, and wow. to Sweden and to Russia, like literally wow. every continent but Antarctica right now. We're, wow. we're, we're coming for you, Antarctica. All right. <laughs> but I honestly, at this point, I, I get messages daily from comics or aspiring comics who say uh, X, Y, and Z episode helped me get on stage or uh, people are always leaving comments on YouTube about like how helpful this was, where has this been all my life, and things like that. And then yeah. during the pandemic, all live shows shut down. So I really focused on the podcast and building up that community of comics. And now it's turning to this Facebook group with almost 4,000 comics in there. Oh, and there's, I gotta get on that. Yeah, yeah, please, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, um, it's called the Comedy Writing Room on Facebook. And we, we do daily joke writing contests in there. People are getting feedback on their jokes. It's just mm. like a fun, positive, supportive place for comics to develop their craft. Mm. And it's something I wish existed when I started 11 years ago. Exactly. So now that's become uh, another place for comics to develop, but also comics in there are saying, I don't know what I would have done without the pan- like with this during the pandemic. I mean, I've had people like, crying telling me like how wow. this has changed their lives there was honestly I, this this is wild the most mind-blowing one maybe there's so many but there's a comic here in atlanta who actually ended up he got shot Ooh. 11 times oh it's like 50 cent oh my and, um, <laughs> and uh, while he was in recovery he said that hot breath is what like kept him going Wow! Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. That was to hear that one. That one, that one was overwhelming, and mm-hmm. it, and it, that one, that one hit me. I was like, oh, this is like deeper than comedy. When this guy's yeah. like, he's been shot eleven times. He's listening to Hot Breath to get him through it. And I was exactly. just like, and I, I host a show in Tucker, and um, he was he was able to come out and perform on that, and um, it mm. was it was incredible. That was our first time actually like meeting in person, and exactly, it, it's it's just so rewarding, and it, it makes you realize how much. The, a comedy community is more than just around comedy. It really is like a, just a community of people who share their passion for comedy, but so much more. So yeah, it's powerful, people, man. People, like you said, laughter is, is is powerful. So yeah, the fact that people just want to come and, and have a good time and laugh, and that's the biggest thing I love about stand up. Like just seeing those teeth, man. Seeing them, yeah. in there, seeing them in there enjoying themselves. And my yes. favorite is also my favorite is hearing guests like. Um, I'll see them out or uh, they'll DM me or something and be like, you know, I I headlined uh, in Baltimore and had like four people come up to me saying they heard me on Hot Breath. And like hearing that side of it as well. So not only from the listener side, but even from people being guests, they're like, oh, Hot Breath. Like, I went on there, I started getting DMs from people, people were coming to my shows. So seeing it on both sides of it of like, oh, they're getting, the guests are getting more out of it than just promotion. And then the Mm -hmm. listeners are getting more out of it than just learning the craft. It's it's very rewarding and something I didn't expect when I started. I was like, I just want to profile these dope Atlanta comics. And now it's grown into, really it's, it's more than a podcast now. It's like an online platform that really is here. Our tagline is like to cultivate the next generation of great comics. And I really do believe that the comics we have in the hot breath of verse, we call yeah. it. I yeah. do believe those are going to be 
like the next wave, like yeah, how, yeah, how yeah. people see, oh, there's Wild and Out comics or there, there's Second City comics and whatnot. Like people are gonna yeah, be like, oh, that's a hot breath comic. I really believe that's gonna comic. happen, and that's gonna be huge. That's gonna be a hell of a legacy. To I'm leave excited. Right I'm excited. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> all right, man. Well, yeah, just tell us uh, what you got popping next, and uh, you know where they can hear Hot Breath and all of that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hot Breath is available wherever you listen to podcasts, your favorite podcast apps, and that's also available on YouTube. If you just go on YouTube and search Hot Breath. Uh, if you want to join that Facebook group, just go on Facebook, search Comedy Writing Room, and you'll see the Comedy Writing Room presented by Hot Breath Pro. And uh, me personally, I mean, all my social media is Joel Byers Comedy. And if you want to hear my comedy, I have a comedy special called The Trophy Husband. Oh, awesome. A tro- the Trophy, trophy Husband. husband. Oh, yeah, yeah. Check it out. It's a participation trophy. <laughs> but uh, I won first place. I was the consolation prize. But uh, yeah, that's available on my website, joelbyerscomedy.com. And I love connecting with people. I love helping people. So if you're a comic or just a comedy fan, please DM me. Let me know you heard me on this podcast and let's let's connect. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I feel like, you know what I feel like this is? Because I became a fan as soon as I saw Hot Breath and I'm doing the comedy chatter. I feel like, I don't know if you ever um, hip to the uh, the Marvel whenever they... Uh, they do the episode <laughs> and they do a cross episode. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. And then you got to fight it. You're like, damn, where is that one at? And this, you got to go find Superman and Lois. Yeah. Just yeah, to yeah. look at the other one on, on Flash. And I'm like, oh, that, that's, <laughs> that's the way I feel like this is. But thank you so much, sir, for, letting, for getting it in. Oh, man. man. It. Thanks for having me, Melvin. It's an honor to be on here. Thank you. Hey, yo, thanks so much for checking out the pod this go round. A very special thanks to my dude, Mr. Joel Byers. Make sure you check him out on all his social media platforms, as well as his website. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned for one more episode of season three of the Comedy Chatter podcast, and then on into season four, where you'll get super dope interviews from super dope comedians, and of course, myself, Melvin Williams. Y'all be good to yourselves and be good to each other. Peace out.